Hey brothers and sisters, I'm going to give you a quick update. Something happened, it's 429 this morning. Um, as you all know, between 12 and 3, the spiritual realms are at its thinnest. Between 12 and 3, 30, that's the demonic hour. 3.30 meaning it's a mockery to the Most High. Because he died 3.33 in the afternoon. And, um... 3 to 6.30, there's, there's still demonic activity. But, but the realms aren't as thin. Even though technically they are thin. But I'm saying they're at their thinnest between 12 and 3.30. And, um... That's the demonic hour. And 12 p.m. in the afternoon to 3.30 p.m. in the afternoon is the angelic hour because that's when Christ died. Christ died, I believe, 3.30. And then at 6.30, I believe, 3.33, I believe he died at 6.33, his uh, spirit was um, sent up to the Lord. We know that Jesus Christ is God. What I mean is, is that the Lord was glorified. And um, I believe that's when the, the temple was destroyed. The Pharisees saw the pro Jesus Christ prophecy was fulfilled. I also believe that was when um, the earthquake happened. No, the earthquake happened and the temple was destroyed the moment Christ spirit, Christ, um, be the moment that Christ died. So Christ died 3.33 in the afternoon, right? And then um, at 6.33, I believe that the sky got dark and then um, the temple was destroyed. A lot of people think it was moments after Christ died, but it was in a space of three hours. The Lord told me three hours after, he, after his human body died, uh, the temple was destroyed and there was a great earthquake. Um, that's how the temple was destroyed because it was an earthquake. And um, the moment the Most High died, the sky started to get dark and there was thunder, lightning. The clouds became black, the sun became black. A sackcloth, and the Bible said that. And it was like that for three hours that it was dark. And then at 6.33, um, I believe the temple was destroyed. I had a dream about that too. And anyway, going back to what I was telling you. This morning I was attacked by a demon and I'm gonna to explain to you what happened. Uh I told you that the spiritual activity is picking up in my house. It's not just me. It's other righteous brothers and sisters in Christ that this is happening to. Me and my two sons were attacked at the same time. My son said that he uh, felt something pressing him down and he couldn't breathe. My older son said that. My younger son had nightmares. And what was weird was they both had the same exact dream that they described to me. They said that they both had a dream that an old hag, which is a type of, uh, it's an occultic spirit. The Bible talks about the old man and the old woman, you know, which represents sin. Not just the old man to be, you know, the old man representing sin, the old woman representing sin. As you know, going back to the book of Genesis, woman came from man. So the old man means old man and old woman, which means a sinful self. So this is an occultic spirit. It's also a type of sex, marine water spirit. It told them that it wanted my sons to join them. And it had, in one of our rooms, it, in the spirit, Jerome, it showed them both four candles, red, black, and white, occultic candles, four being a mockery to the Most High God's angels, the four horsemen. So 
they had the same exact dream where they saw a child being sacrificed. So this is a spirit of abortion as well, a spirit of child sacrifice, an occultic spirit. And this demon told them, you better join us or else. And they kept saying, no, no, no. And they had the same, the, what they told me, my children, is they had the same exact dream. And uh, they didn't tell me at the same time. They told me one at a time. And here's the thing. What's strange is that my two sons did not tell each other their dreams that they had. They only told me. And I didn't tell the other. I didn't tell the other son about the first, the, what his brother dreamt about. Um, excuse me a moment. They only told me what their dream was about. They didn't tell anybody else. I spoke to them one at a time. And then I got them both together and I said to them, you know, you, you just, you both had the same exact dream. You both attacked by the same type of demon. Demon basically told them that they better join them. Stop preaching for God. Stop prophesying for God. Or the demon was going to force them. And my sons cried out for Christ and the dream was over. I asked my sons each, what time did this happen? And they told me 4.29 in the morning. Well, my attack happened at the same time. I was in my bed sleeping. And um, I don't know how to describe this to you guys, but I felt something pressing on my chest. And I heard my chest crack which means I technically should be dead. I shouldn't be speaking to you right now making this video. Okay? But my chest cracked and I heard my chest crack and it was the most excruciating pain I can imagine. But here's the other thing. Jesus Christ saved my life because at the same time I heard my chest crack, I felt my chest move back into place and I was healed. And I heard a scream, so Jesus saved me, and the demon that tried to kill me was destroyed by the Lord. It's true what they say with the testimonies when you have sleep paralysis attack, that you do hear a buzzing sound. And I saw this thing sitting on me, so I wasn't seeing things. It's true that you can't breathe that much. And it's true that they do put a heavy weight on your chest, except this demon's intent was to kill me. It said, and I quote to me, I'm tired of you prophesying and warning the people. I'm tired of you exposing the servants we sent, meaning the false prophets that I expose and other brothers and sisters in Christ expose. He said, I'm tired of you getting in the way of our plans and bringing souls to the Holy One, meaning Jesus Christ. Then it said, um, I'm tired of the light in your eyes and the light around you, it said. Well, the Bible talks about when the eyes are full of light, that means that that person is righteous. And if the eyes are full of dark, that means that that person is a sinner. So the demon basically told me, and I'm never going to forget this. And this happened in the span of three minutes. Okay? It had to have been at least a few minutes, maybe less. Five minutes or less. Felt like more than that. It told me that... Either I join it, or it'll force me, or I'll die. I said to this thing, then I'll die for Jesus Christ. And then I closed my eyes, and I was ready to just go. And I called to the Father, and I said, Lord Jesus, I'm ready to come home. I know that you will look after my family. 
And that's when I felt my chest move back into place. And I heard that demon shriek. I knew something was destroying it and it was the father. I heard my father's voice say, my daughter, I'm here. I'm always here. I'm watching over good and evil. I've sent you forth to warn the masses. I've sent a prophet amongst the country. I sent a prophet amongst the masses. A prophet that is not honored in her own country. I'm not implying I'm a prophet, ladies and gentlemen. I don't even think I am. But I was called by the Father. And I just found out I was called by the Father today. Explains why a lot of the dreams I have come true. But glory to the Lord Jesus, not to me, not to man. All glory and power and honor to the Father. I'll never forget this. The Lord wanted me to give you guys a message. He said that these are the last days and um, as you go to work, pick up your child from daycare, you go to college or school, as you're in the hospital giving birth, as your child reaches her, his or her first birthday, and you're going to birthday parties, or you're celebrating Father's Day, all these man-made holidays, Fourth of July, uh, Labor Day. As you're watching the next reality show, the next drama, huddled in front of the TV, absorbed into the world, the distractions, they are plotting their demise. They want you to be distracted. They don't want you to be aware, so that way when stuff hits the fan, so to speak, ladies and gentlemen, you are not ready how to, on how to deal with the situation. You're not prepared. That's how they want you. They want you like sitting ducks. I'm paraphrasing what the Father's telling me to tell you. He said, daughter, I see, I watch, and I wait. For there's going to be a storm coming upon the land. And when the Lord says storm, he means a great war. It's prophesied, ladies and gentlemen, Ezekiel 38, 39. Saints. The Lord is saying for you not to get distracted or or absorbed into the cares of this world because that is going to be your one weakness. That will put you in the most terrible danger, the most indescribable harm. And the Lord doesn't wish that for any of you, neither do I. Father's saying for you guys and gals, excuse me. To um step out of Babylon. Step out of the world and to just prepare yourselves for what's to come. A few nights ago in my room, I saw the Archangel Michael. And he told me that the Lord has sent me a messenger. His Majesty is telling you to prepare your time is at hand. Now, I don't know what that meant. I don't know. You just made mention about my garments being ready, and I don't know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. I know garments are white garments. They represent righteousness. 
I don't know if that means I'm going to be called to the Lord, meaning pass away. I don't know. But whatever the Father's will is, is the will that I'm going to follow. Michael told me that the Lord told me that he was going to take me out of the way before things, before man sees a suffering unlike anything I've ever seen, mankind has ever seen, period. I've spoken to a few other brothers and sisters that are so strong and righteous in the Lord and they told me that Michael appeared to them too. With the same message. So, I'm just going with the flow. I'm telling you guys that I've been told to tell you to stay out of the world. The other thing I wanted to touch base with you on before I wrap this up. You're hearing people saying that Barack Obama is not going to be around for a third term. I believe he's going to be around for third term. third term. I'm not stating that as fact. I do believe very firmly that he is the last president you're going to see because if you look around you, this country is in a police state already. I mean, our rights are being stripped. This country is no longer a democracy. Thereby, whether, whether Obama stays in office or not, the next president after him will be like a freaking dictator. Sorry about the word freaking. It's not a curse word, but he'll be like a dictator. That next president, um, excuse me, dictator, will be given more power. President will just be a cover-up title. Obama's not a president. He's like a dictator. Look what he's doing. Look how many times he broke the law. Look how many times he did treasonous acts, ladies and gentlemen. He's not a, he's not a president. No president would act like that. Okay, the presidents we have in the past are not angels, but they didn't pull the stunts he pulled. You know that he is the the worst. He is he is the worst president in history. In other words, he is the president that has committed the most treasonous acts than any other president before him. So I just thought I'd touch on that a little bit and uh I put up a video about a false prophet called Super Gospel Gangster. Somebody said he didn't date said, well, he did, because other people tried to correct him. If you look at the comments, somebody told him, no man knows the day nor the hour. That person was being used by the Holy Spirit to warn him. This person did date said, you just got to really listen and be careful of false prophets like that. With that being said, um, as far as when I'm leaving the ministry, I don't know. I feel like it's very near. And the closer I get, the more the demonic activity picks up in my house, increases in my house. But I'm still standing here for Jesus. Doesn't matter what Satan tries to throw at me, what false prophet demons he sends my way, I'm still standing. So I trust my father. You've been warned, ladies and gentlemen. My advice is to take this to Jesus in prayer and get your houses in order.